Today, I'm going to be completely finishing this DIY pond with lighting, landscaping, a heron net, and more. But first, in case you missed the last video, a quick recap, because we did a lot. From taking out the old pond, putting in the new pond, insulation, cladding, DIY filtration, and planting. And it has now been about a month since that initial setup. The water has stayed crystal clear, the plants have been growing in nicely. In particular, the parrot's feather and the watercress are doing really well, having almost completely covered the edges of the planter basket we use. Also, a couple of the water lily pads have reached the surface, and as you may have noticed from the intro shots of the pond, the fish have been added. And that's because I wanted to add them gradually so as not to overwhelm the filter and allow it time to grow the beneficial bacteria required to deal with the fish waste. So I started out by adding three small fish about a week after the initial setup. I then added three more a week after that. Then a further week later after that, I added the final three, bringing it to a total of nine goldfish, which I think is a nice number for a pond this size. Now I did make sure that they were all properly acclimated to the pond and I also added some Evolution Aqua Pure Filter Start Gel directly to the filter which contains live beneficial bacteria that will help seed the filter media and hopefully prevent any ammonia spikes that can sometimes occur with a new pond setup. So now that we're all caught up, the first thing I want to do today is to add some lights, allowing the enjoyment of this pond to continue after the sun has gone down. And these are the lights that I shall be using, the Awaze Luna Aqua Classic LED. And it's a set of three lights, and it's actually the exact same light that I used on my above brand mini pond. And that's been working now for a good 18 months with no issues whatsoever. And I'm keeping the placement of these lights pretty simple and just putting all three along this front edge of the pond. And once securely screwed into position, it was time for some cable management. Now I'm going to be adding some more lights in a bit, so we'll have a look at what they look like after dark later on in the video. But for now, I'm going to be moving on to the heron net. And I actually made this net a couple of weeks ago because I just couldn't put up with how messy the temporary net I was using looked. And I'm making it in a very similar way to how I made both my marginal planting shelf and the pump stand that I made in my previous video by using PVC pipe and various elbows and T pieces. And by using these, I'm hoping to make something that will not only be lightweight, easily removable and hard wearing, but also not too bad to look at. So once I put the framework together, I put it into position to make sure it all fitted and it did indeed fit nicely. However, it was bowing slightly. So I added a couple of bits of leftover filter grid, cut to size and zip tied into position, which sorted out that little problem nicely. I then decided to add another piece of leftover filter grid to this window here because I just thought it'd be easier than trying to put a little piece of netting over it. So once that was all done, it was time to stretch the netting over the framework and this is where it all started to go a bit wrong. Because as it turns out, it's actually really quite difficult to stretch netting over a frame like this and zip tie it all neatly into position. But I did spend some time trying and even tried a second slightly different net thinking that might be a bit easier. It was not and ultimately I did have to admit defeat on the net application but I still needed some sort of heron stopping device. So I headed out to home base in hope of finding something that I could use and stumbled across these. These are plastic coated metal grids and they fit perfectly on my PVC frame. And once zip tied into position, I was happy with how it looked. It was nice and neat and yeah, sure, it doesn't look amazing, but it's going to protect the fish, it's going to last and it's easy to remove if I'm outside enjoying the pond. So now that's done, we can get it out of the way and move on to some landscaping around the pond. And I'm going to start with a bit of bamboo. Now, I actually bought this bamboo originally to use on the pond itself, like I did with the above ground mini pond, but decided against that in the end. So instead, I'm adding it to a couple of the fence panels behind the pond. And it's just going to give the pond a bit of a nicer backdrop and hopefully a bit of a tropical stroke 
holiday vibe. And yeah, I just stapled it into position, doubled it up at the bottom and just used up what I had available. Once that was done and I was happy with how it looked, it was time to move on to some more landscapey type things. And up first, I've got this nice Fatsia plant that I repotted in a nice terracotta plant pot. And I'm just gonna pop it in front of the mechanical filter. And again, with this, I'm just trying to create that tropical jungle vibe. And with that in position, I could bring our boy Ron the Heron in. And Ron's gonna help deter any other heron in the area from attempting to steal our fish. Although with the net we've made, he shouldn't really have too much work to do. With Ron in position though, and as I mentioned earlier, I want to add some more light. So I went on Amazon and bought these. And these are just some fairly cheap outdoor string lights that are apparently not just shatterproof, waterproof and dimmable, but also come with a remote control. I'm just gonna hang these up using some small hooks. And just as a bit of an extra safety measure, I do later on use some zip ties to really secure them into place. And as you can see, I ended up extending these right along the fence line and around the corner, almost reaching the above ground mini pond. So with the lights hung, I unrolled a seriously holiday vibes outdoor rug and positioned it in front of the pond, completely covering the little mistake I made when cutting the deck. Next up though, and after literally months of waiting until this project was completely finished, I moved in the garden furniture. Now that's in, I'm going to sit myself down and wait for darkness to descend so we can see what the pond looks like at night with the new lights that are now in place.